Wow, rock fans! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another MPJ rock album review where we review all the latest rock albums. I'm your host, Nigel, and welcome to Paul, to Dom, and to Trish! Hey! Welcome, everybody, and of course, our absent friend, uh, Dave. Uh, so, what's the show all about? Well, we are reviewing all the latest rock albums. We put them head to head. Who will we buy? And then we vote out of five. We'll give our ratings. Will they get into our Hall of Fame? Which band will win the Battle of the Bands, the Battle of mm -hmm. the New Albums? Who have we got today? We have got uh, Rob Lido and their album Broken Soul and Girl School. WT45, uh, question mark. Okay, so who are these bands? Rob Lido, uh, Frontiers Music SLR, is pleased to announce their second solo release of the Chilean vocalist uh, James Rob Lido, Broken Soul. This album follows the 2021 release of his well-received debut solo, solo album, Wanted Man. For the new album, James is joined by Sinner's Blood Band, uh, Blood Bandmate uh, Nassen, Chaos G Chaos Magic, on guitar, drummer Happio. Oh, I'm not even going to pronounce Mattia Gignoni, um <laughs> and uh, Alessandro Del Vicino, who also produced his debut album. James Robledo is a Chilean vocalist who comes from a family of musicians and prominent places in the history of Chilean music with both national and international success. Now Robledo turns returns to his second album, which we're about to read, Broken Soul. Ooh, I don't think we've had a Chilean um, band here, so... Hmm. What did we think of that then? Uh, so, Paul, let's start with um, with you because you are a fountain of all knowledge. I know you study Chilean music uh, at university. Uh, let's find out a little bit more about what you thought about Rob Lido in your best Chilean accent, please. Oh, uh, well, speak Gonzales. No, I can't. I can't do speedy. Um, yeah, I, yeah. So I, I was a little bit disappointed you're in that. Um, he was from Chile, and there was no bag uh, pan pipes in his album, so <laughs> there was a, that was a, a major disappointment for me. Um, but this was a solid album. It was like um, it was a heavy metal album with uh, you know a, a, a power metal strain running through it. Um, it was solid. Uh, he had good vocals, but it wasn't the best album I've ever listened to. If you know what I mean, um, we've listened to a lot of albums. Uh, in this genre, um, and while I enjoyed it, um, it it did it, it didn't for me. It didn't match the best out there. Dom, were you disappointed about not having pan pipes in there? Then it, it would have improved it maybe a little bit. It would have it. It was to me. Yeah, I mean there was the craftsmanship of it. You know, the guitar playing. There was some great guitar chops in there. But it was so generic. It, it sounded like Euro rock. I know it's not from Europe, but it kind of had that feel. And for me, like all the songs, they just were really generic. It didn't really develop into anything. It was kind of verse, chorus, verse, chorus, chorus. Then you had the middle eight with the solo in it. And then you had a chorus and then it ends. And like every song basically did that. And he also does that really annoying rock thing with his singing where, like, the end of every line, he holds the the last word for, like, a whole half a bar afterwards. So it's everything's, like, very dramatic, like that, you know what I mean? And it just really... And if you listen to it, because I had to go back and listen, every single line he holds... It's like he hasn't kind of written enough words, so he has to extend the last word to kind of get to the end of the bar. But... <laughs> And it's like a rock thing. It's trying, kind of trying to make you sound like you're rocking, but it so, but it felt really generic. Uh, well, uh, Trish, uh, it's very interesting what Dom said about trying to hold on to your word, uh, which we do with your words. We, we, you know, it's like listening to you. We like to hold on to your, your every syllable that you, uh, mm -hmm. that you utter. Um, and we're holding with bated breath now. Rob that the correct answer. Thank you. Okay. So this album is a heady mix of metal and hard rock. It's got guitars, thundering drums, good melodies, and Rob Lido's gravelly Chilean vocals to finish things off nicely. Right now, right here is a banger of tune. There is nothing broken about this album. 
let's face it, we all know this album, in theory, should have me written all over it. But is it enough to hit my rock chick sweet spot? In the title of another song I like from the album, Fire Burning, like a good chilli, this album makes me feel warm inside with the heat gradually building over each listen. <laughs> <laughs> If I had an outtake for the year of Perlers, which I might well do that, actually. Might well do that. Of absolute Perlers, that would be a Perler. Brilliant analogy from that side of things. Um, I think all of those things, I think it is a really solid rock album. Really solid. Um, the vo his voice is terrific and the musicianship is brilliant. I think I think I go along a little bit with Dom in terms of this, his composition, though. I think it just becomes a little bit samey. Uh, no, actually, becomes very samey. Um, and so, uh, first listen, I went, "Oh yeah, love it." Second listen, I liked it. Third listen, I liked it. Fourth listen, yeah, it was okay. I liked it. I, I still kind of like it, um, and it wouldn't be an album that I keep kind of reaching to. I like fire. Fire and Broken Soul kind of made my playlists. Um, I thought they were excellent tracks. Um, but yeah, I think now I think about it, I think you're probably right. Maybe it does, it does hold on to those. I didn't really pick up on that much, but maybe that was subliminal or, or in the back of my mind from that side of things as well. But I mean, it was a solid rock album, really solid and, and actually quite enjoyable. So, um, you know, I did, did it hit my sweet spot? Probably not, but I, I enjoyed the album. I thought it was really good, so good right uh, <clears throat> now then who are they up against they are up against a little bit of girl school and wt45 who are girl school well they are a british rock band we seem to have migrated we've migrated back to uh back to um back to um to, to England, uh, formed uh, in the new wave of British heavy metal scene in 1978. Frequently associated with contemporaries Motorhead, they're the longest running all female rock band still active after more than 40 years. Formed from a school band called Painted Lady, Girls School enjoyed strong media exposure and commercial success in the UK in the early 80s with three albums, Punk, Tinge, Metal and a few singles but lost momentum in the following years. In the 90s and 2000s, Girls School focused on shows and tours and made a few studio albums. During their career, they have travelled the world playing many rock and metal fan festivals and co-headline or, or supported important hard rock heavy metal bands. They maintain a worldwide cult following and inspiration for many female rock musicians. However, do they still have it? Do they have it? Um, let's find out from the doomsayer of regurgitation of 80s music. Dom, they're Dom. Girls' school. <laughs> it was a great album, wasn't it, really? I mean, I think it's... It, it was, um... Fantastic. What I love about it is that it is um, obviously it's in their tradition, in their style, a uh, new wave of British heavy metal, still like really solidly in that groove. But with that has got what that genre originally had, which is that element of punk. And the idea was that new wave of British heavy metal came out of metal kids who were influenced by punk and so they wanted to take it into a kind of slightly darker slightly less polished kind of way and girl school have like you know they've really held on to that that's amazing you know there's um so it, i i enjoyed every song on there i thought there was um it had a lot of uh, interest it held my interest a lot and yeah i'm what can you say they're like um still rocking G good on them why not go for it well from one rock from a band of rock chicks to the rock chick <laughs> trish what did you think of girl school did you want to become a member of that band did you want to be rocking out there with them wow I had heard of Girls' School before, but not listened to them. Considering they are in their golden years, being 60 plus, the majority of them, I wasn't sure what to expect, if their voices would stand the test of time. And boy, their voices certainly have. Mm. School might be out for summer, but Girls' School are giving us plenty of music to study on this album. What a fantastic all-female rock album, with the opener, It Is What It Is, followed by Cold Dark Heart, 
This album is punchy, energetic. These new tracks will appeal to old and new fans alike. It's time to dust off your leather jacket and join a glorious rock and roll party. Paul! Goes, goes. Well, again, uh, yeah. Um, so I'd, I'd heard of, obviously I'd heard of them years ago and I thought, well, this is a band, this is a band, a female band that wanted to be a bit like Motorhead right in simplistic songs but turning up the dial to 15 and blasting it out there and but for this album i was pleasantly surprised it was a rock and a rock album uh with a lot of fun uh in there and and they they sounded like teenage girls almost you know so um they maintained that energy and enthusiasm and um yeah i i, I enjoyed this more than i thought i was going to enjoy it and the more I listened to it, the better it sounded. So, yeah, a really good album. Tom, earlier in our shows, you said yeah. about... <laughs> well, two things I'm going to take you up on here, Dom. That, that bands of this <clears throat> age, not really going out there to rock, they should be putting their feet up at, at home and having an early night with a cup of cocoa. <laughs> and also, you know, they shouldn't be at the age of 70 singing about partying mm. with with girls... And yet, girls school are out there partying with blokes. <laughs> Where's the equality? Where's the equality, my friend? I, said, I didn't want to hear about it. Um, I, I don't know. There's a definitely a difference in the... Uh, or maybe this is a sexist thing. I think there's definitely something about being a female-led band, doing it on your own ground, and that's always been something. The bands like that, and like The Runaways is the other example, I guess, that you could sort of connect with them to. Runaway's more of a punk band at the time. But they weren't um, playing on the fact that they were being women, that they were women in order to get appeal. Do you know what I mean? I think they were doing it on their own grounds. That was, um, I read, I actually looked up, I read an interview when I was listening to the, to the band and they were saying how, uh, often the media tried to push them into being kind of a sexy image, which they were trying to avoid. And they said their, their base fans actually didn't see them in that way at all. They said that they were so busy headbanging that they never actually stared at the girls. And anyway. <laughs> Fair play. Fair play. Uh, so yeah. All right. Okay. I'll take, I'll take what I'll take your criticism, but I, and I want to, I want to give them some juice because I think they, they produce oh. something really good. My point being, I think, is that, hey, age is irrelevant. If you've got it and you've got the energy and you can produce music that, that is good, then you should yeah. be you should be out there banging away till your 70s and 80s yeah. if you can produce that, if you've got the energy. And I think we should not We should take age out of it, um, I think, uh, from that side. Okay, however, yeah. saying that, I think they should put their feet up and have a cocoa because this was just an average rock and roll album average at best um it was it was okay it was enjoyable but it was incredibly repetitive there wasn't anything really new on it i take up to the fact that you know you say oh these 70 80 rock band and they, they bring something and they just regurgitate what they did back then and this was just a regurgitation of what they did back then it was all right it was fun it was okay it was just reasonably enjoyable but it wasn't anything earth shattering it's not something that i want to you know there's a lot of really cool kind of I think I like my rock and roll with more kind of you know a bit of more kind of that that kind of American kind of southern American kind of blues into that sort of stuff and that's how I like my rock and roll you know we mentioned about um, Sergeant Mississippi in the opening two stuff there this is just flat out same rock and roll all the way through the album and I just got a bit bored of it by the end of it it was all right it was fairly enjoyable it wasn't a terrible album but it was just okay I, I just it was just okay really um it didn't grow on me it was what it was it was roughly enjoyable so sorry to say but girls put your feet up and um you know relax really but i agree lots of energy in it so but uh, nothing earth shattering for me i'm afraid so okay uh let's find out shall we um what uh who which album we're going to buy um and obviously what our friend uh kind of dave said uh, from that side of things as well uh so, Paul, uh, for our Chilean friend, Rob. Three. Three. Dom. Uh, one and a half. Uh, Trish. Four. Four. Ooh. 
Uh, Dave, give me 3.5. Dave liked a bit of chilli. He's a good man. And, um, <laughs> and I also give Rob a 3.5. So, um, well, that's good. So, 7, 11, 14, 15 and a half. Pretty solid. Nothing earth shattering, but pretty solid. Um, okay, let's go to a bit of girl school then. Dom. Girl school, I'm going to give um, uh, three and a half. Three and a half. Paul. Four and a half. What? Four and a half? <laughs> Wowzers. That's a, that's a shock. That, that is a shock. Um, okay, Trish. Go on, girls. You got a five from me. Five? Yeah. Five? <laughs> Wowzers. Yes. Five. Five. <laughs> I love the show because, like, we all hear different things. Because Dave, give a four. Why? I know, right? Give Dave, give a four. <laughs> uh, I give it a three. So, um, you know, uh, it's all right. Seven, seven, twelve, sixteen and a half, seventeen, twenty. No. Yes. No. <laughs> Let's read that again. Just check that again. Seven, eleven, eleven. <laughs> 15 and a half, no. 19. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say that couldn't have been because it's not an average of uh, four. So, yeah, seven, 12. No, hold on a minute. No, we'll I, it I, it's right, it's 20. So, three plus four is seven, plus five is 12, plus four and a half is 16 and a half. 20. It is yes. 20. 20. Congratulations to girls' school. You have made <laughs> the Hall of Fame. Damn, should have given it two and a half. Damn, should have given that two and a half. Why did I give that two and a half? It was average. I can't believe that. They're in the Hall of Fame. Congratulations to Girls well School. Well done, girls. Uh, well done. It, uh, you know, credit with credit. It is a high energy kind of album. And we, we enjoyed it. And um, I would have bought, well, ultimately, I'd be the only one that would have bought um, that would have bought our Chilean friend, really. You all have bought Girls School. So there we are. But well, there we are. What do I know? What do I know? Doesn't really matter, well, does it? But there we go. So you know we'll nothing. Up. I know nothing. I know we nothing. Know everything, um, there we go. Uh, okay, so congratulations to Girls School and their album, um, which temporarily I've just forgot what the album was called again. WTF. Uh, what, yeah, WTF 45. 45. WTF. And I'm going, I'm going to put an F in there. So, um, yeah, so there we go. W, yeah, but it probably is really, isn't it? WTF. Uh, yeah. But, you know, thinking about it, but there we are. So congratulations to them. Well done, Rob. Uh, you also got a good uh, good score as well, apart from Dom, who, you know, didn't have, next time put pan pipes in for down Dom. And <laughs> obviously love you. Uh, maybe maybe have a duet with Jess, Jess Rotal. And that, might, uh, that might work out. <laughs> yeah, there yeah. we go. Okay, um, so thank you very much for listening. If you do enjoy the show, please like and subscribe um, our show. And I hope you keep listening. Check out our Wicked uh, reviews. Uh, and we do lots of lots of reviews with upcoming bands, which is amazing. Um, and thank you very much for joining. Thank you to my panel today, to Paul, to Dom, and to our rock chick, Trish. Um, and keep rocking out there. And uh, keep safe. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye.